Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna wait to see that I actually am seeing people. Hey, okay, people are seeing me. Good, that's just my little last safety check. So listen, I am honored and excited to show you guys uh, the this guy, this guy Josh Mobley, if you don't know him, he's a composer, he's a sound designer, he does uh, TV, film, and games. Would it be true to say games too, I think? Um, some games. Josh is off camera shaking his head. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, very talented guy. You've heard his demos probably no doubt from record and, and reason as well. And he does some cool drumming, so we're going to bring him on here. So Josh, coming to us live from Pittsburgh. Say hello. What's up? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to warn you, my wife could go into labor at any moment, so live TV, I don't know what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to play some beats. Let me switch the camera. There we go. Let me begin. So, how did I do that? Uh, believe it or not, uh, if you can do this, you can do this. And to illustrate that, um, let me play a simple beat. The one thing that you'll notice that's constant in that beat is the hi-hat. It never changes, not once. And the kick and the snare are always playing with the hi-hat. There's never a moment in that beat where, you know, you're not hitting the keys together with the hi-hat. So. so what you have to do is... Um, Oh, uh, what kit am I using? I'm using the uh, Reason Soul School beat, uh, Detroit, which is probably my favorite kit. Uh, that thing is just alive, man. I'm going to jump uh, in here for I a second, Josh. Have... Yeah, actually, Go ahead. this is something I, I you had told me before that you were using Reason Soul School for your drums. That that superseded uh, Reason Drum Kits too for you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, like I started. Uh, whew, I started way back in the day, just playing simple drums on. Um, you know, like general MIDI kit. Hold on, let me let me switch here. Uh, <laughs> we like your T-shirt. Right there, you go. <laughs> um, I, I started, you know, playing like I had a Korg T1, I think it was, and um, you know, no velocity switching, you know, none of that. So, uh, I mean, you know, the most you could do was, you know, and you know, all the, you know, the kicks and the snares and the hi hats obviously didn't change with velocity. And then when Reason drum kits came out, it was just like this. It was a revelation, man. Like suddenly, you know, I was hitting the the key softer, and it was a you know a, you know different snare samples, and it just it, it felt so alive and dynamic, and um, yeah, it just changed my playing completely. And um, you know, I just wanted to get better and better and better and better and better. And then um, you know, of course, Reason Soul, Soul School came out, and I, I I thought that was you know it probably uses less samples, but it just um, it just sounds alive in a way that um, you know, I really haven't heard before in a lot of drum kits. So. But interesting, so before we get into the nitty gritty, I wanted to ask you how this even came about. I mean, I've been doing music for however many years, probably too many if I think about it, and I right. always program my drum beats. I can play drums. It's not that I don't understand how to construct a beat, but I don't 
play it live, and it's never even occurred to me. I'll spend seven hours trying to get a human feel by nudging notes in the sequencer before spending five hours trying to learn how to play the beat with my hands. Yeah, well, I guess it came out of necessity. I was in a band, like, way, way back in the day called Auto and Cherokee in New York City, and um, they had me doing all kinds of things. You know, I had just playing one part in the upper register, another part in the lower register, and then they were like, hey, man, you know, we need a, we need a kick drum on top of that, uh, you know, the drum kit that the guy's playing. And then, you know, so I started doing that and, you know, playing the keys, and, you know, it's like I could feel my brain, like, splitting in half trying to, you know, trying to basically, you know, to do two different things with one hand. And then I was like, well, it's not so much of a stretch to just start playing the kick and the snare, you know? And then I, once I realized, you know, like with the hi-hat, that, that it just doesn't change. As long as you forget about the hi-hat playing at all um, and realize that it's like a steady gate, you know, you can do all kinds of things. And, and you know, I just kind of took off from there. And uh, also have, making, you know, wanting me to play in, uh, you know, four on one hand and five on the other, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, one, one, two, three. I mean, that just, uh, that, that changed me as a musician. Uh, really? You know, yeah. And, and, and also, you know, I mean, I just wanted to make my own beats. I didn't want to bother with uh, programming. You know? you know, if I just hear it on my head, I just want to be able to sit down and just get, 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 get or, or, you know, whatever. And, I like that because I can, I can relate to it. I can, I sing beats. And I can play drums. And then it's like I have this cognitive disconnect. I'm sure a lot of people do. Where it's like, okay, I'll scat the beat I want to do. And then I'll have to go and be like, wait, what am I? Well, what's only the bass drum doing? Now I'll try and play the bass drum. Okay, now what's only the snare drum doing? You know? Right, right. And yeah, it's, it's like a, it's an emotional thing. You know, like you have to separate. Uh, God, how do I describe this? I, you know, I don't want to come off as like some weird zen master or whatever but you know you you almost just have to uh, kind of forget what you're doing in order to achieve what you want to do you know like uh if i forget my right hand for instance and just focus in on you know what the left hand is doing you know then suddenly it becomes 10 times easier to you know lay down any number of things you know because hmm. think about it if you're you know, you're playing a, a keyboard solo, you know, you don't want to think about every note that you're hitting. I mean, that's that's crazy. You just want to be able to let go and uh, and, and just do whatever comes to... Uh, I like that. That's what a drummer's doing. A drummer is yeah. not, you know, going one E and uh, two E and uh, you know. But in the beginning, you will, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how you learn. And I mean, you know, the secret to doing anything well musically, at least... From, from my experience is to, you know, because you have a tendency when you're when you're unfamiliar with something to just you know to kind of speed up and tense up, and that's that's the worst thing that you can do, you know, uh, in order to you know get something like this, it's you know completely alien to most uh, keyboard players, is to slow down and do it as slow as you know, as slow as you have to in order to do it consistently well. Right. Okay. I want to go through. We got a couple of questions coming in on the on the chat room here. Uh, first of sure. all, uh, I'm going to go before this one scrolls off my screen. Someone says, "Is Josh the guy with the tattoo?" And actually, there's there's multiple people with the tattoo, but Josh is probably one of the most famous. Yep. That uh, <laughs> that tattoo has shown up a few different places. <laughs> and as er Ernst has said, uh, now we can never change our logo because you know we've got people uh, all around the world with this thing on it. <laughs> Yeah, what's up, Ernst? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, some other ones I saw, though. Someone wanted to know uh, what you think about the Jason McGurr refill. And I, I don't know if they mean the the loops that are in there or if the sampled kits or what. I, I, I love them. Um, I, I use those sometimes. I think they're, you know, very natural. And, um, and also, I like the compressed feel of them. You know, they're real punchy. Uh, but I always, right. I always find myself gravitating back towards soul school it's just you know when you layer that in with with uh different drums you know like maybe electronic drums or whatever it, it just it just adds something I don't, I don't know how to describe it but that's where you know i feel the most dynamic um, 
Um, just a, a word, a message here from James Bernard himself. He says, Josh stole my haircut. So you guys can work that out <laughs> offline, maybe. What's up, James? <laughs> and um, someone else was asking, where are you right now? They, they say it looks like your living room. Oh, it is my living room. We're in between places. Uh, we're moving oh, I didn't to, know. Uh, yeah, um, house in August. This is also actually for anyone who saw Josh's video interview that we did with him, where we filmed his interview as well, just the opposite angle. So, yeah. uh, a couple yeah, of the questions. Yeah, yeah. What's oh, your favorite style? Oh, God. I. That's a tough one, man. I guess mm. electronic music and, and metal. I'd love me some uh, Mastodon. And, and do you, I know when I've heard you play, you play these sort of breakbeat style drums. Do you tend to, mm -hmm. will, will you play other genres as well? Will you play a metal beat or a... Oh, yeah, sure. But, you know, I mean, I, again, you know, like, you got some people that do keyboard drumming that are just insane, you know, how they do it. You know, they, they go off on, like, these Neil Peart tangents of just, like, you know, drum solos and hitting all these toms and, you know, I, I, I'm just not into that, man. I mean, you know, I just want to make beats and, um, you know, metal, especially like progressive metal is, is like a whole different, you know, monster because, you know, I mean, it's almost like one, like Mastodon, you know, it's almost like the entire track is like one long drum solo and uh, just, <laughs> I can't go there. <laughs> gotcha. I can't. All right. Well, let's actually get into it a little bit. Um, and okay. let's, I, I guess I hand the floor over to you and educate everyone, myself included. We're all excited to see this. All right. Uh, I'm going to switch cameras and go down to the keys. All right. So, Ooh, let's start with the basics. I'm going to go back and I'm going to play that simple beat. That's two different patterns. Now, the, the key to doing both of these, and more so this one, is, again, the hi-hat is not going to change, ever. So just do it and forget about it. You know, put, put your right hand on autopilot if you can. And, you know, this is a really good exercise. It seems, it, it's so simple, but, you know, getting yourself comfortable just going bang. And then, um, you know, to the point where you can go bang, 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 consistently uh, is key. And then, you know, the second thing that you want to do is every other one. Now, it seems like it really should be simple, but, you know, you might, you might find yourself having to, like, uh, stop and think about, you know, how do I go bang, 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 bang. And what I do is... You know, in the beginning, uh, when I first started out, you know, I would actually move my hand instead of, you know, hitting the kick drum. So, you know, uh, so I go. Bang. 